their right, A258, Castle Hill Road. Then, ahead, keep left. Deep inside the White Cliffs of Dover lies a network of former top secret government tunnels used to defend a nation. The site was a secret command centre for the Army, Air Force and Admiralty and even had two operating theatres to treat injured soldiers. Above the surface is England's largest castle, Dover Castle, which was shut to everyone but us. Known as the key to England, Dover Castle has protected our country from the threat of invasion for the past 20 centuries. Situated on the famous White Cliffs of Dover, the castle is just 21 miles away from France, but despite surviving two world wars and numerous invasion threats, the castle is still standing in prime condition today. Beyond the Point has been fortunate enough to get exclusive access from English heritage to take a look around this fascinating site. It has a mile long curtain wall, towers, gatehouses and everything needed for a menacing symbol of English strength. This fortress has kept the country safe from everything from the medieval French to Hitler. However, the story of this beast begins long before that. In the 1st century BC, this was the site of where Julius Caesar and his empire first landed in Britain. Earthworks at the site suggest that the land could have been used as early as the Iron Age. OK, we're standing here on the top of Dover Castle, uh, which has commanded the channel here for nearly 2,000 years in some form or other. Uh, and although it's not a brilliant day today uh, in terms of the weather, uh, at least we can get fantastic views out across the site to all the various parts of it. Uh, and we'll be able to have a look around uh, some of the areas that you wouldn't normally get a chance to see. Henry II built one of the most impressive keeps ever built. Guarded by 14 towers, this is the centrepiece of the site, the Great Tower. The Great Tower wasn't just a fortress, but a palace with plenty of space for the king and important guests to stay. In 1216, Louis VIII of France and a group of rebel barons crossed the channel to gain control of the castle. Rather than going over the walls and risk being attacked, they exploited Dover's main weakness, the white chalk below. Louis and a group of engineers started tunnelling through the chalk with the hope of the foundations collapsing. Louis got through some of the defences although the English were strong enough to make them retreat. Afterwards, Louis signed a truce, although just four days after, King John died from dysentery. It wasn't until 600 years later that the tunnels were next in use when Napoleon Bonaparte invaded Dover, although thankfully the British Navy managed to stop him stepping foot onto English soil. At the start of the 19th century, their fears of Napoleon returning by digging tunnels under the channel. But this wasn't as mad as it sounds, as the British had actually started digging a mile long tunnel under the channel, although it was abandoned due to the threats of national security. The castle and tunnels below remained abandoned for the next 130 years, although the threat of invasion was still imminent. But this time, it was the Germans who were feared. In 1940, Prime Minister Winston Churchill needed a rescue mission to get troops out of German invaded land and appointed Vice Admiral Bertram Ramsey to come up with a mission to do so. The tunnels built during the Napoleonic Wars were still a secret to the public, but were now being transformed into Ramsey's military command centre.
The decision was made to evacuate Dunkirk and retired Admiral Ramsey was promoted and put in charge of this seemingly impossible task. For nine days straight, him and his accomplices worked tirelessly in the underground headquarters at Dover on Operation Dynamo, as it was codenamed. But they weren't working alone, as Army, Navy and Royal Air Force officials all had their headquarters underground at Dover. Ramsey, at his most optimistic, had hoped to save from 30 to 40,000 individuals. In just three days, Ramsey had already rescued over 70,000 troops. However, there were still hundreds of thousands yet to be rescued from the beaches of Dunkirk. All over the southeast and the Thames, small boats were called out to aid in the evacuation efforts, such as the Vanguard CK-69 we see here, and it now lies derelict on a boatyard in Canvey Island, Essex. By May the 28th, 1940, 700 of these tiny boats would have saved hundreds of thousands of men in Operation Dynamo. He had hoped to save 40,000 lives at a push, but instead he saved a staggering 338,226 people. By the end of 1940, the castle was back to being the key of England, a pivotal point for World War II. Realising the potential of these secret tunnels, Ramsay decided to build a new set, naming these Annex Level. He built bathrooms and sleeping quarters, operating theatres, command centres and even a hospital. In this room, radar operators would send fake military orders and commands to confuse the Germans. Vice Admiral Bertram Ramsey died in a plane crash in 1945 when his plane was taken off for a conference in Brussels. He never saw the end of the Second World War or knew of the victory of Britain. But before long there was another threat, a much deadlier one that could see an entire city wiped out with just one bomb. The Admiralty retained interest in the tunnels and the whole site until 1958 when the government quickly snapped up the site. The Home Office had decided that the site was to be used as a regional seat of government, to be used in the case of a nuclear war. Throughout the 1960s, tensions of the Cold War prompted British ministers to designate regional seats of government, places that senior ministers could go should the UK have been under nuclear attack. The still secret tunnels below Dover Castle were seen as the ideal place and an emergency television and radio station were built on the dumpy level, although these emergency measures were shortly abandoned due to the chalk not being radiation proof. Today, English Heritage have brought the history of the site into the 21st century, creating an immersive environment the sights and smells from wartime Britain. The keep is still fit for a king, thanks to Time Team, who transformed the tower into the royal occupancy it once was. We would like to thank Gavin for our exclusive tour of Dover Castle and the tunnels below. If you'd like to find out more about unseen places, then visit our website, beyondthepoint.co.uk.